Sunshine News, coming to you live from Starchild, Minnesota, with news about one of your favorite authors. William Shakespeare has written his next big hit, The Comedy of Errors. Today, we will dive into who the author is, what this book is about, and what people are saying about this hot new read. William Shakespeare is an English poet and a playwright who lived during the Elizabethan era. He was born April 23, 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, England, and died April 23, 1616. Shakespeare was baptized at the Church of the Holy Trinity on April 26, 1564, and attended King Edward IV Grammar School in Stratford. Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway at the age of 18, her being 80 years his senior. They had three children, but one of them died during childhood. Shakespeare began his theater career as an actor and playwright in London, England, where he joined Lord Chamberlain's Men, a theater company that performed in front of the Queen. Shakespeare wrote over 30 plays throughout his career. He wrote about comedy, romance, tragedy, and history. Shakespeare introduced thousands of invented words into the English language, including archvillain, dewdrop, watchdog, and sanny. His works has been, have been translated into over 80 languages, and Shakespeare helped to found the Globe Theatre, a structure that was performed in until about 26 years after his death. The Comedy of Errors was written between the years of 1589 and 1594. It was first performed on the Feast of the Holy Innocents, December 28, 1594, during the Christmas celebrations at the London's Gray's Inn. Shakespeare's plays were often performed on a simple thrust stage in an open-air playhouse, usually in the afternoon. It would be performed on an uncluttered stage with a balcony and a trapdoor. The play was first printed in 1623 in the First Folio, a collection of Shakespeare's plays that was published seven years after his death. The idea for the play came from the Metanacci, a play by Platus, the most popular playwright in ancient Rome at the time. The comedy of errors is different, however, as Shakespeare chose to make the neglected wife more central to the story, added the wife's sister, added parents to the twin Antipholuses, and made the Dromios identical twins. That's so interesting! Now we get a short summary and then a scene from the play. In this scene, the twins, yet again, miss each other by a minute, building the confusion towards the impending climax. Throughout the play, we meet a cast of characters. First, there are two sets of twins, the Antiphilus and the Dromios. Both twins are born on the same day, and the Dromios are purchased by the Antiphilus parents to be their servants. When the play begins, there are Antiphilus and Dromio of Syracuse who are traveling to find their missing brothers, Antiphilus and Dromio of Ephesus. The Antiphilus parents are Egan, who is going to be killed for traveling to Ephesus because it is against the law, and Emilia, the mother. Antiphilus and Dromio of Ephesus have settled down, so Dromio is married to Nell, and Antiphilus is married to Adriana, whose sister's name is Luciana. Other characters in this play include the officer who arrests Antiphilus, Pinch, the doctor and exorcist, and the courtesan, a friend of Antiphilus of Ephesus. At the beginning of the play, we learn that the Antiphiluses, the Dromios, and the Antiphilus's parents are on a ship when a storm begins. The storm splits the ship in half, splitting them into two groups. Amelia, the mother, is sent one way with one Antiphilus and one Dromeo, and the father, Egan, is sent another way with the other Antiphilus and Dromeo. Years later, Antiphilus and Dromeo of Syracuse go searching for their missing brothers, arriving in the land of Ephesus to search for them there. Confusion ensues as people confuse the two Antiphiluses and the two Dromeos. Antiphilus of Dromeo of Ephesus are locked out of their house. Antiphilus of Ephesus makes a deal with a courtesan and a goldsmith that goes terrible when he's put in jail because Antiphilus of Syracuse got the necklace instead of him. Dromio of Syracuse is horrified when he meets Dromio of Ephesus' wife, who claims to be his wife, and Antiphilus of Syracuse begins to fall for Luciana, his brother's sister. Confusing Luciana and Adriana, Antiphilus of Ephesus' wife, who both believe Adriana's husband is flirting with his wife's sister. Needless to say, there's a great deal of confusion. In the section that we are going to perform, Antiphilus and Jomi of Ephesus have been arrested because it is believed that they took a ring and a necklace that they didn't pay for. In reality, the necklace was given to Antiphilus of Syracuse, which explains why Antiphilus of Ephesus is certain he never received a necklace. After Adriana, Antiphilus of Ephesus' wife leaves, 
her husband in jail to go talk to the goldsmith, she sees who she believes to be her husband escape, escape from jail, but it's actually Antiphilus of Syracuse. It's time to see this exciting excerpt we heard so much about. Say where for this thou lack me for today, and why dost thou deny my bag of gold? I did not, gentle husband, lock thee forth. And gentle master, I receive no gold, but I confess, sir, that we were locked out. Dissembling villain, thou speakest false in both. Dissembling harlot, thou art false in all, and thou art confederate with a pack to make a loathsome object scorn of me. But with these snails, I'll plunk out these false eyes that will be holding me this shameful sport. More company, the fiend is strong within him. I me, poor man, how pale and wan he looks. What, will you murder me, thou jailer, thou? I am thy prisoner. Will thou suffer them to make a rescue? Masters, let him go. He is my prisoner, and you shall not have him. What wilt thou do, thou peevish officer? Hast thou delight to see a wretched man do outrage and displeasure to himself? He is my prisoner. If I let him go, the debt he owes will be required of me. I will discharge thee ere I go from thee. Bear me forthwith upon his creditor, and knowing how the debt grows, I will pay it. Good master doctor, see him safe and conveyed home to my house. Oh, must so, oh, most so happy day! Master, I am here entered in bond for you. Out in thee, village, villain, wherefore dost thou met at me? Will you be bound for nothing? Be mad, good master, and cry the devil! God help those poor souls, how easily do they talk. Go bear them hence. Sister, you go with me. Say now, whose suit is he arrested at? One Angelo, a goldsmith. Do you know him? I know the man. What is the sum he owes? Two hundred ducats. And how gross it do? Do for a chain your husband had of him. He did we speak of a chain, but he had it not. When as your husband, in all a rage today, came to my house and took away my ring, the ring I saw upon his finger now, Straight after did I meet him with a chain. It may be so, but I did never see it. Come, jailer, bring me where this goldsmith is. I long to know the truth here of at large. Wait for thy mercy, they're loose again. And come with naked swords, let's come where help to have them bound again. Away, they'll kill us. See, this witch is are afraid of swords. She that would be your wife now run from you. Come to the centaur, fetch your staff from thence. I like that we were safe and sound there. Faith, stay here this night. They will surely do us no harm. You say they speak us fair, give us gold. Methinks they are such a gentle nation that, but for the mountain of mad flesh that claims marriage of me, I could find in my heart to stay here still and turn witch. I will not stay tonight for the town, therefore away to get our stuff. That was entertaining, but what happens next? After the mass confusion and the scene performed, all the characters end up outside the abbey, with one set of twins inside and one set outside. Antiphilus and Romeo of Syracuse are seen running inside the abbey by Adriana, but then she sees Antiphilus and Romeo of Ephius running towards her outside the abbey. When the twins inside the abbey come out, they are face to face with their twin brothers, along with their mother and father, who happen to be close by. The twins embrace, and all ends well in this roller coaster of a play. Antiphilus of Syracuse is very confused when his servant brings him money, although it's not his servant, but the servant of uh, Antiphilus of Ephesus. He keeps the money, but remarks that he's very surprised by the way everyone is treating him in the city, getting nice compliments, getting gold necklaces, and now even money. He doesn't really understand this because he has only been in the city for a short time. The confusion of the two twins is pretty much confusing for everyone they encounter. At the same time, in another place, Antiphilus of Ephesus is under arrest, but it's hopeful that his servant, Jome of Ephesus, brings the money, but the wrong Jomeo finds him and brings the rope that Antiphilus of Syracuse asked him to bring. Antiphilus gets very confused and beats Jomeo, but Jomeo is not really surprised because the beating is pretty usual. The other characters Adriana, Luciana, and the courtesan come and try to heal Antiphilus from his possession because they believe he's crazy. Antiphilus asks Adriana, his wife, where the money is, but she 
doesn't really know because she believes that she has given the money to Dromio of Ephesus to build him out of jail, but Dromio does not have it. Later on, Adriana finds out about the gold and the chain that her husband is involved in and all the money that he owns. All the characters can seem to come to a conclusion of all the activities that have, been, that have happened during the day. Later on, Antiphilus of Syracuse and Dromi of Syracuse want to leave because of all the craziness of the day and because they are afraid that they will not be safe. After learning about this magnificent new play, we're going to hear two assessments, both by a professional and by an individual who's seen the play. As for our professional assessment, The Comedy of Errors was one of Shakespeare's earliest and most popular works. It's a confusing play because there are two sets of twins, one set of masters and one set of servants. They're separated by a shipwreck. Many years before, the Syracuse merchant Egon has twin sons, both named Antiphilus. At their birth, he bought another pair of newborn twins, both named Dromio, and made them his son's servants. In a shipwreck, he lost both his wife, one of his sons, and one of the servants. The boys who remained with him were named Antipolis of Syracuse and Dromio of Syracuse. They decided to travel to Ephesus, where their other twins live. Nobody knows about the twins, causing confusion to arise when local residents see them. Antiphilus of Syracuse and Dromeo of Syracuse run into people who talk about knowing them, giving them gifts, and giving them compliments. In, on the other hand, the other pair of twins run into people who are confused, missing money, and they had given the other twins that it was actually them. Antiphilus of Ephesus goes to jail for not paying the money needed, his wife comes to the rescue to pay for a gold chain that he never received. At the end, when the four twins come together, everything is finally resolved. Hi, my name is Blanca, and this is my personal assessment of the Comedy of Airs. Now, this play is very interesting and it's fun to read. The play is different from all of the other plays that William Shakespeare has written because of the lack of violence. See, on the other plays like Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet or Macbeth, the violence is seen throughout the whole play. For example, they kill for the power, um, jealous of power, and they kill for revenge. This play is about identity and the importance of family. The twins have no idea that they had another brother, nor the servants. And one of them lived with other parent, with their dad, and the other one with their mom. The importance of family is seen throughout the play when the father of the twins goes um, through risky places to try to find his last son and his wife. The same thing with um, the brother Antiphilus of Syracuse, who tries to find his brother but doesn't find him. At the end, when everybody is re when everybody's coming together, we can see the importance of family, but just their voices and their happiness. And we can see the servants that are just overjoyed to know that they are that they too are twins and that they have somebody else who can share stories with. Another theme that is very very visible in this play is um, the theme of identity. The confusion and mistakes um, is what makes this play just very funny and humorous. Each one is constantly confused with the twin because they look alike and I'm sure they wear the same clothing, which I'm very confused about that too. The people believe that they are all the same and no one really questions either each other. Both the twins have different personalities and that's what makes them different. And that's what people see at the end when they like encounter each other. This play is very fun to read. The themes are very important and the themes that are brought into the play are themes that are very important today and are themes that will be important in the future. The play is very sad, but very funny and it has, it, it has its happy places. And the surprises, well, they never seem to stop. Well, that's all we have for you for today on Sunshine News. Thanks for tuning in with us today and go see the Comedy of Errors at a theater near you.